Thank you very much, Klaus. And welcome everyone to my lightning talk. Brace yourselves, STD to underlying is coming. Let's start with a simple snippet. Um, it's written in C20 and we include four headers from the standard library and open a namespace mylib. In the namespace, we have a small utility function called to underlying, which takes an enum and cast it to its underlying type. And then we have a print endianness function, which calls to underlying with little big and native endian and prints the resulting um, integer numbers then to the console. Um, and in the main function, we simply call this pretty endianness function. You can see the outcome on the right side. And yeah, it's a well formed little um, program. And so far, so good. Um, in the last few yeah, months, um, more and more things from the upcoming C23 standard uh, are getting standardized. So you might be interested to peek at that and um, switch the language of your compilers from, or the standard of your compilers from C20 to the latest version. But now suddenly your program doesn't compile anymore. And if you take a look at the error, um, you can see that the compiler complains that there is uh, an ambiguity when calling to underlying. And the ambiguity comes from the fact that C23 will add um, std to underlying, which is a function that looks um, approximately the similar like the one that we defined in our snippet here. Um, and now if we want to make a call to, to underlying in the lines 14, 15, and 16, then um, because this is an unqualified call, so a call without any um, explicit namespace or class specifiers in the front, um, the compiler will look in the surrounding namespace. So in our case, my lib and the global namespace, but it will also consider the um, function arguments that we're spe specifying to find the correct overload. Um, this called argument dependent lookup and will lead to the effect that as std endian obviously comes from the std namespace, um, the compiler will also look in the std namespace for this overload to underlying. And since C23, he will find an overload there. So the compiler has two overloads, both are a similarly good match, and so now you get a compiler error because of the ambiguity. So let's brace ourselves for this. How, how can we prevent this error? There are three options. The first one would be to make a fully qualified call to, to, to underlying. So we can qualify it with the namespace, and then the compiler won't do the argument dependent lookup. The next option is to yeah, get rid of your handwritten own implementation of to underlying and just use the standard version that's available now. Um, this is, I would say, the best option, but it of course requires that you don't have to, um, or that you can guarantee that std to underlying is always available. <laughs> and the last option um, is to use the feature test macros, which are available since a few standards. So you can um, check for underscore underscore CPP lib to underlying. And if that macro is defined, you know that the standard library will provide an implementation of SCD to underlying. So you can add a using declaration at your namespace. And so now within your namespace, SCD to underlying is visible. And if the macro is not defined, then you can fall back to your own implementation. This is now, of course, slightly more code but it has the big advantage that at call side, you don't have to change anything. You just still can call to underlying. So let's wrap it up. Every unqualified function call that you're doing, which might involve an argument type from another namespace, might lead to a different overload set. And it's, yeah, at first just a different overload set, which could result in a compiler error due to ambiguity, which we just saw. But it could also be that the new overload set contains a candidate, which is simply a better match. So now suddenly you get a different runtime behavior. So these are different things that I just want to remind you to keep in mind. And that's from my side. Thank you.
All right. Thanks a lot for the lightning talk. So since there's no questions in the chat yet, I do have at least two questions. So perhaps I get just started with my two. So the conclusion sounds a little bit like um, you don't like ADL. What exactly is your opinion about ADL? Is this something that is great or not so great? Do you see this as a problem in this context? What do you think? Um, <clears throat> I think ADL is um, a good tool if you want to have customizability. For example, um, we have the customization points STD swap in the standard, um, which gets, um, yeah, which is designed to be found via, via ADL. So there it's a good advant advantage. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, now for two underlying, it's, um, yeah, it's not so good of an advantage. So I guess, um, yeah, depending on your, um, on, the, on the size of code and depending on your um, also, uh, casing of functions. Um, this can be risky, but I think overall the advantages um, outweigh definitely. But it's it's something you have to be aware of and uh, might come at surprise. All right. So now I have a question from chat, which is similar to mine indeed. Um, so is the CPP, uh, so the test macro, is this already available in all the compilers or do you have experience where it is available or not? So you check for the availability of that macro. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a C++ 98, C++ 11 compiler, the macro will simply not be defined. So yeah, the, the code within the if dev block will not be compiled and you will always get to the else block. Um, as soon as you, as you have a C++ um, 23 compiler or a compiler which, yeah, Mm -hmm. um, has, has the first features available, then this macro will be defined, but you have to include either the header version, which um, contains all the feature test macros that are available, or you have to include the header utility, which will provide the to underlying function and define the macro if it's available. I hope that right. answers the question. I, I, I think so. All right, great. Thanks a lot.